Hey guys, it is Josh with Motorcycle and Power Sports News. And this week, it's another installment of Project X. And I've got the gloves on, well not on yet, but I've got the gloves, so you know we're gonna be doing something good. In this, we've got a little wiggle wobble up in the front end there, and we're gonna start hitting the shocks up here at least two. Do we get to the back ones today? Roll the intro, let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back this week. I'm really glad you guys are here. Once again, another Project X installment. And this one is gonna be all about steering and suspension on this. Now, as I mentioned kind of in the intro there, this has a little bit of uh, wiggly wobbly in the front end here. And what it, we've got is we've got a loose tie rod end on the inner side there. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. We're gonna check everything else when we get it apart. On top of that, we are gonna do the front shocks here. Later today, we're gonna to see if we can get to the rear ones. But first off, let's get these front wheels off so that way we've got access to everything. Now that the wheels are off, next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna take the brake caliper off. After we get the brake caliper off, we're gonna head over to the tie rod assembly here. We'll pull this bolt and nut off, same thing with the inside. Then we're gonna take it over to the workbench so that way your alignment starts out a little bit easier when you go back together. So now that we got this out, two things we're gonna to wanna to notice is first off is how these are on a little bit of an angle. So make sure we only do one end at a time so that way we can keep track of the angles for them. One thing that I always like to do is I'll take a magic marker or a paint marker or something like that and mark right along here to where the, at 90 degrees from the uh, eyelet. That way I know how they're clocked. Second off, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take and we are gonna measure from the center to the center of each hole. And on this one, we are really close to 14 and 1 8. So that is the measurement that we need to have out of the tie rod end when we put the new ones on and that should get us pretty close to straight. Now later on, we're gonna dive into an alignment and how we actually do that. So, let's get this apart. Something that you're gonna to wanna to look at with this is these threads, you're gonna to wanna to go counterclockwise if you're facing the end of it, so that way you know that you're loosening this up. So now if you look, there's my line, and I gotta make sure that this points even with my line. So now it's set up so it's pointed perpendicular with the line, so we will make sure it stays here. And we will tighten that jam nut. And now we've got the tie rod assembly ready to go back on the quad. So now that we've got the tie rod assembly ready to come back in, we're not necessarily gonna put it on quite yet because we still gotta replace these shock assemblies here. So with that, this is a collar that goes around the shock assembly. So there's two bolts back here that we're gonna loosen, but first we need to make it so this assembly can come out and far enough away that we can slide it all out. With that, we're gonna remove the hub nut, then we're gonna remove the ball joint first. Now that we've got the spindle assembly off, the shock slash strut assembly here is what we're going for, this in the spring. In order to get the top end of it off, we've gotta take the rack off here. We'll get to that next. For that, I'm gonna lower it on down. So 
So when you take this off, the other thing that you gotta be aware of is there's actually four small T25 torque screws. There's one here, one here, one underneath here, and one back here. So get four on each side, and this will lift right out. So the last piece to get these out, we've gotta hold the shock shaft straight while we loosen this lock nut here. If you just try and turn this nut, the whole assembly is going to spin like that. So we hold the shaft, we spin the nut, we'll get that out, that'll drop down, and we can start putting it back together. As we get to the exciting parts of putting everything back together, we're gonna stick the strut assembly back in with the steering knuckle here. Now in this, there are a few things that we're gonna to wanna to look at. First off, they include this washer for the top of it here. This is what allows the strut to move back and forth, obviously, as we go through the suspension travel. So, first things first, we're gonna stick this back up in here, and then we're gonna go ahead and put the assembly that we need for that on top of it. There's actually a cone shape for here, a washer on top of that, another washer, and then the nut. So what I mentioned about how the fact that this is ball shaped up in the top there, it gives it that ability to move in and out like this, which is gonna be helpful for us here. So when you go to put this back together, the one thing that a lot of people have a tendency to forget is this ring right here. This ring is a key for everyone because it keeps the spring from beating the tar out of the top of this knuckle here. The knuckle is aluminum, plenty of strength when you spread out that low, but if it's concentrated in just one area, it's gonna beat that up. So make sure that you've got this steel ring around here. Then we're gonna slide this to all together. Now, we don't wanna necessarily tighten the steering knuckle down quite yet because we need to put some preload in the spring. This will slide up a bit further yet. That being said, we're gonna put this drive shaft through the steering knuckle and we're gonna hook our ball joint up. Whenever you put a ball joint or anything like that, whenever you take it apart, always put a new cotter key in. These are super cheap. Just have some in your shop. Make sure you use new ones of these. That way you're not chasing parts down the, down the trail. So as you're putting it all back together, tie rod end's gonna go on the spindle next. Make sure the bolt goes down. That way you're not gonna run into the wheel or anything like that with it. Next up, hub assembly's gonna go back on. This is the hub and rotor assembly. Line the splines up on the shaft. Make sure the shaft is as straight as it can be. Put her on. So something that everyone's tempted to do is put the nut on, put the cap on, and go from there. I always leave the cap off to the side. You put the nut, the washer on, get it tight but not too tight because we don't want to crush this bearing in here. Get it on, get it seated. When we've got the wheel and tire on it, and everything's set on the ground, then we'll be able to torque it to the 90 foot-pounds like it should be. Next up, I've got the floor jack up here because we're gonna put that preload into the suspension. Now, pretty much anywhere under the steering knuckle, ball joint area on the control arm here, we're not putting a huge amount of pressure on it, but we just need just enough up pressure that we can push the steering knuckle up over the strut. And down here at the bottom, there is a spot so you can either see or feel that that strut is all the way bottomed out in this before you go ahead and tighten anything down. Now that I feel it's all the way bottomed out in here, I can go ahead and tighten these down. Now, one thing you wanna make sure of, the brake line has a holder to make sure it stays up and out of the way. Make sure you put that on that top bolt there. Now that we've got that tight, we should be able to lower the jack down. Strut will stay at the same height, but you'll see the spring obviously unload a little bit there. We're in good shape. Let's make sure it stops now. 
So something else, whenever you put the brake calipers back on, obviously you had to push the piston back. There is nothing more exciting and not in a good way than when you start out, want to go for a ride, and the first thing that happens is you have zero brakes. So make sure you grab that brake lever a couple of times, reset the pads out to the rotor so that way there's no unpleasant surprises. Next up, wheel and tire go back on. Now that it's on the ground, we've got a stable platform and we can use the leverage of the four-wheeler against it. 90 foot-pounds for the hub nut. Once again, that's to make sure we don't crush that wheel bearing, but in the same sense, I really don't want to go chasing my wheel and tire and hub assembly down the trail. I said something earlier about new cotter keys. Same thing here. And now finally, the cover, because we know it's on there. I know I've got the lighting off, but bear with me for a second. What's so cool about being at Motorcycle and Power Sports News is the fact that in the building next door, we've got access to all this great automotive equipment. And this is an automotive alignment rack. Uses lasers, all sorts of other really cool stuff. You know what you need? Some string. Let's go back over there and take care of that alignment. So as I mentioned, in order to take care of this front end alignment here to make sure that we've got the handlebars and the wheels and everything pointed straight and at the right spec, we're going to use some string. Now there's a number of different ways that you can do this and so I'm going to use, because we're in a studio, a couple of light stands. That's going to allow me to set the string up and I'm going to show you guys what we need to do with that. In this, we're going to use the rear tire, the rear wheel actually, to make sure that we are having a straight line across the four-wheeler. On top of that, as soon as we get that, we'll then measure both sides of the front wheel here, and that'll tell us whether we're towed in, which means the front wheels point in at the front, or towed out, which means they point out at the front. Now, according to what Polaris specifies for this, between one eighth and one quarter inch of total tow out is what this ATV wants. So, that's what we're gonna give it. I've got my tape measure here and we're ready to start measuring, but what do I need to measure? First off, we need to make it so this string is the same distance to here as it is to here. And you typically want it to go right across this line of the tire right here, the center line. That'll give you the best range and the best idea where you're at. And you wanna make sure the same thing over on this end is that you're right by that. So let's get the string tied up and we'll start measuring. So here, we're at three and seven sixteenths. Here we are at three and three eighths. Calling that a win right off the bat, but I still need it to be just a hair difference. So this side needs to come out just a hair. So that's what we're gonna do here. So three and three eighths there, or three and five, or seven eighths there. Seven sixteenths, wow, three and seven sixteenths. So now we've established that we have a straight line that goes the full length of the, the ATV here. So you remember that I said the specification on this means that we can have a quarter to an eighth of an inch of toe out is what we want. So when we divide that between both wheels, we can have, basically we need an eighth inch or a sixteenth of an inch difference between the front and back here. Now, mind you, before all this, I made sure that I had the handlebar straight. So here we are at three and seven eighths. And would you look at that, we are at three and 15 sixteenths. Calling that a win for this side, I wanted to check the other side. So when you're doing an alignment on sportsmen like this, one thing that I found that's pretty helpful is leaving off 
luggage rack here. That way, if you're doing it on your garage, you can just come in from this direction and take care of everything and not be trying to lay on your back or squeeze your arms in through the side here. Nonetheless, first thing that we need to do is if you did need to adjust it, is you need to loosen the jam nut on both the inner tie rod end here and on the outer tie rod end. So when you do that, that allows the tie rod itself, which is the piece of metal in between the two joints, it allows that to spin. Now that's why one is right hand thread and one is left hand thread. That makes it so if you turn it one way, it gets longer. If you turn it the other way, it ends up getting shorter. That changes toe in, toe out, goes from there. Now once again, I do this with the string that you had here so that way you can measure. It doesn't take much to get it in spec because remember, we're dealing with an eighth of an inch on either side. Go get your alignment done. So I mentioned before that if we had time, we were gonna get to the rear shocks and We've got time. That being said, you can do it without taking the rear tires off, but boy, it's sure a lot easier to get them off. So we're gonna pull these guys off and we're gonna do the right rear because it's a little bit tougher because of the exhaust here, but we'll make sure it gets done. The joys of working on a used quad. There's mud in here. Nonetheless, these rears end up being pretty simple. There's one bolt down here, and there's another bolt up here. Once we get those out, this thing slides right out. New one's gonna go right in there. She's got some miles on her. What do you think? So let's do a quick little comparison here. And I'm actually gonna hold these up over here so we've even got a better shot of them. The old ones, the original ones, have an adjuster on them. It's nice, it's a click adjuster basically. You can take it from notch to notch to notch. It affects ride height a little bit, but more or less, it's gonna affect your preload on this. It's a decent adjustment, especially from the factory on something like this. The Bronco has a threaded collar on it. Now, one of the things that I really like about a threaded collar like this is you have an infinite amount of adjustment. If you want the back end to ride low, then bring it all the way down here. If you want the back end higher or stiffer, bring it up top here. They've got her about three quarters of the way towards the top. I talked with Bronco about it. They said that's a great starting point. If it's too hard or maybe it's too high in the back end, we can revisit this later. A simple set of spanner wrenches is all you need in order to knock this lock part loose and then you spin this other one loose too and that'll let you adjust it. Let's go ahead and put the new one on. I think we're close to done. So now that we've got the rear shocks on, that's really it for the suspension back here. Everything else felt tight, there's no bushings loose. One thing that's sometimes a problem area is these rubber bushings. Right now they don't look that bad, something to keep in mind for the future. But let's put this tire on and then I got the other side to get done yet. So now what we've got left. Put this on, bolt her down, and we'll be back out on the trail. Speaking of back out on the trail, next week, we're gonna start tearing the engine apart on this. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Really excited to dive into this. We're gonna go disassembly, diagnostics, the whole nine yards on it. Make sure you subscribe to this. I'm gonna see you guys out on the trail.